Hello everybody, it's Mario here, coming at you from beautiful Barcelona, Spain. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you a bit about being on a fat loss diet, on a low calorie intake, and at the same time getting a little bit stressed out when you're invited to eat out, when you're invited to go to a restaurant, when you're invited to meet up with people, that involves food. And now you might be thinking, well, why is this an issue? Why should I even worry about this? Well, let me give you a little bit of context. So. This video was inspired by a recent conversation I had with one of my clients who's been on a fat loss diet for several months. And of course, as his body adapted, we were reducing calories to compensate for that adaptation to maintain the rate of fat loss. And as you keep producing calories, you will reach a point where eating out becomes stressful because you simply don't have the calories for it. Or at least it becomes a question whether you should spend 1,000 calories or 1,200 calories on a one meal that is let's say half of your daily intake or even more in a lot of cases. In my case, personally, when I go real low in calories to get really shredded, I have to go to 1,700, 1,800 calories, and should I spend 60% of my calories on one meal? You know, that's really a question. And what that did to me in the past is often I would stay home, I wouldn't really go out, I wouldn't even enjoy it when I do go out, I would have to uh, in, spend an enormous amount of willpower, I wouldn't really enjoy the event as well, it would create so much stress for me. And that's a situation where a lot of people end up. So how do you deal with that? And that's something I wanna to talk to you guys a bit about here. And the first thing I wanna point out that if you've been thinking about this, if you've been thinking about setting yourself up for success, and if you've been kind of thinking about a plan or how do you make this work, you're already ahead of so many other people who are just trying to wing it. Because this isn't something that you can just wing it, you know? It's just not something that you can just put yourself in that environment and you're thinking that you're gonna succeed. It's very, very unlikely that you're gonna make it. And the reason why, I mean, if you think about it logically, like your brain, after you've been in a caloric deficit for a very, very long time, is, is extremely prone to all kinds of food cues. Your brain is hungry for calories, right? It wants to eat. And you're putting yourself in a situation where number one, you're surrounded by everybody who's eating food. You're surrounded with a lot of food cues that are related to smell. You're looking at food, you're looking at everything. And it just is a situation, is, is a context where you simply cannot succeed, right? You will not be able to uh, sustain that amount of willpower for a long time. After a couple of hours, it's willpower is gonna run out. And what tended to happen to me in the past, I would overeat tremendously, or I'll just order double food, or I'll just make all these crazy decisions, and I won't even be able to focus on what other people are talking about. I was just looking at the menu, I was just looking at the food, I was just smelling it. All my focus, all my attention was on that. I wouldn't even get to see what people are trying to say because I was so obsessed. And that's what happens. That is literally what happens at a certain point where you get so lean, your brain can only think about one thing before it gets that thing and that is food. So how do you avoid that situation? Well, number one thing and one that really, really helped me a lot, like a quick tip that was a tremendous help for me is to make sure to have a protein snack and a piece of fruit before I go to a restaurant like 30 minutes before, it is such a lifesaver because you just give yourself a little bit, just that little bit of tiny amount of calories, that little bit of protein does wonders. You actually have a kind of a reignition of that patience and you can wait for that meal and then you will not just go through the meal in two seconds and then everybody's gonna look at you awkward like, what, what happened there, you know, why are you eating so fast? Well, because you're super hungry, right? And it's normal to be super hungry on a low calorie diet. So that little snack, protein, piece of fruit, just before you go to a restaurant helps tremendously. Now, the second thing and the big thing and the biggest thing here is pre-planning and making sure that you do have a certain plan in place, that you employ, let's say, uh, fasting for up until, let's say, four to 5 p.m. That's often what I do is I would have only protein, and the veggies beforehand because I know that's gonna be scarce in the restaurant, so when I reach a point where I eat that meal in a restaurant, I know that I'm gonna get my carbs and my fats and I'm kind of getting those macros and I'm gonna to try to estimate to the best of my ability that day to make sure that I'm hitting those macros properly. And I know protein is gonna be a little bit scarce in a restaurant, I mean, you won't go there, order two steaks and things like that. You will have a regular meal. And Protein isn't something that you should be getting from a, like a fancier restaurant or a place like that. Protein is easier to get at home, easier to get it when you have your regular foods available. The same question for the fiber and the same thing for pretty much fruits and vegetables, right? How are you going to get fruits and vegetables in a restaurant? Usually it is very, very scarce. So you wanna make sure that 
I simply handled that beforehand so you can go there and you're relaxed, you know that you hit your goals and that it's all good. So you can actually focus on enjoying your time there. Now, one thing, another tool, and this is something that I've been recommending, and it's something that you have to be really careful with, is to reduce the calories on the day before and day after if you have that event, if you know that it's gonna happen in a couple of days. So why is this helpful? Well, if you create that little bit of a buffer, like about 300 calories, let's say the day before, and 300 calories less the day after, that's enough to get that 600 calories, and on that day, maybe eat maintenance, and you're fine. That's plenty of calories for you to work with, because at that point, you're uh, maybe slowing down your, your rate of fat loss a little bit because you ate maintenance that one day, but on the other days, you kind of compensate a little bit for it, and it's enough because that weekly deficit is still in place, right? You don't have to be 3,500 calories in deficit that week. Maybe you're just in a deficit 3,000 3, calories, right? It is fine. And that little bit of flexibility, looking at it more on a weekly basis, helps so much to get out of that trap, which I see happen a lot, is that guys and girls will fall into is that, you will feel guilty, right? You will overeat that one night, that one day, that one meal, you will overeat tremendously, and you're gonna feel guilty the next day. And what, what you're gonna do then, and what a lot of people do, is just simply cut out calories to a thousand, and they're just like fasting, they're going hardcore at it, and it almost creates that cycle of binge undercutting calories, binge undercutting calories. And it's really not a sustainable way to manage your diet. I mean, if you think about what diet really is, I mean, from a Greek word, it really means the way of living, a lifestyle. And if you can't sustain something, and if it's not a true lifestyle choice, you're not gonna be able to get the maximum results from it. It's not gonna be a long-term thing. And what got you lean is something that you have to keep doing if you wanna stay lean, so it doesn't even make sense to even do these things. I mean, of course, for the short term, you can do a low calorie diet and that's fine. Then you have to kind of exit it and find a sustainable way. But being in kind of a cycle, binge purge or whatever else you want to call it, it is certainly not just damaging and just how you're going to sustain it for the long term, but it's also mentally putting in a position where now you're training your brain into a very, very unhealthy pattern of eating, which can have a negative long-term consequences. So keep an eye on that and make sure that if you are being flexible with your calories on a day-to-day -day basis, that, that there's uh, not that much flexibility, probably about 10 to 15 calories from one day, uh, let's say 10 to 15% of calories from one day, or about 20%, uh, that would say that would be the most I would ever recommend going lower on a day just to compensate. And that's enough. I mean, if you're really not going there for to, to our binge path fest, you're gonna have enough of calories to work with. And that's something I wanna share with you guys. I know this is some issue that I personally had a lot of time and I just experienced that pain and I feel that pain every time someone is talking about it. I hope it helps. I really hope these tips will put you on track and it will give you another tool in the toolbox of fat loss that you have and you can use at any time you need it because it's all about these tools. This is not any magical solution. It's really about you having the tool at your disposal in your mind when you need it, you can use it, you can get the results. And if you don't use it, if you don't need it, even better, right? You can get results without it. So hope you enjoyed. I will leave a couple of videos in the description below, a couple of links uh, with uh, previous videos where I talked about hunger, managing hunger on a low calorie diet. So you guys can check that out if you wanna learn more. Aside from that, if you have certain methods or tips or snacks or things like that that helped you uh, kind of avoid that weird restaurant feeling where you just wolf through the meal in three minutes and everybody's just like looking at you, what just happened? Uh, let me know, you know, if you have any tips like that, leave it in the comments below. Uh, it really helps a lot with the community when you guys share ideas and can really spark some good conversations. So make sure to leave that comment below. Aside from that, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and uh, hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already to join the community and I will see you in the next video. Peace.